The ICGR first of all probably should take you back slightly. Um, you know what happened in the region in the uh, in 1990s, even through towards 2000, uh, the year 2000, so to speak. Uh, the genocide in Rwanda in 1994. The war that erupted thereafter in the region, which almost brought all member states to fight in DRC in 1999 there. And then, of course, the near inaction or reluctance of the United Nations and the AU and other regional bodies to intervene to stop the genocide led to an understanding later within the international community that probably the best way to handle regional problems is to find regional solutions. The the, the Genocide Prevention Project is hinged on the protocol on prevention of genocide. And what we're trying to do under the Genocide Prevention Project, when I was a secretary to that committee on the genocide prevention, is that we use the program to implement the protocol on security, stability, and development. Therefore, the structures such as the Regional Committee on Prevention of Genocide is a structure that is created by the protocol. Mm -hmm. And that Genocide Prevention Committee was launched by the heads of state in 2010. Because it's a provision, the requirement under that committee, and uh, it's a requirement under that protocol, uh -huh. that it is a summit on recommendations of the ministers of foreign affairs that constitute the Regional Interministerial Committee that must endorse that committee. And this was done. In fact, among all the protocols, that is the only protocol that requires that a structure such as the committee that is created by that protocol is endorsed by the heads of state. That is the, the importance that this region attaches that protocol, to that project of preventing genocide, because the potentiality of, the, of genocide in the region is still relevant, is still arrived. So um, the heads of state in the region give it serious attention. When I encountered ICGLR, there was no genocide prevention program per se. There was a treaty that was a very interesting treaty because it was definitely a, a very 
demanding and robust instrument, but was in many ways forgotten, not, uh, not operationalized. And uh, when uh, the Secretary General of the uh, ICGLR, Ambassador Mula Mula, um, mentioned the situation, mentioned the desire of the region to take a leadership position on genocide prevention during the regional gathering that the Swiss, the Argentinian, the Tanzanian had organized throughout the world. Um, it became very clear that there was a need for uh, a, an operational response. I'm delighted that you recognize my uh, instrumental role in making the committee becoming and existing. But the, the greatest work obviously was done by Ashat Santongo. I was just envisaging things, I was imagining things. I first got uh, engaged in the genocide prevention program when I was uh, a doctoral student at uh, George Mason University at the School for Conflict Analysis and Resolution. And um, around that time, uh, Professor Andrea was um, establishing the program. Professor Andrea and um, Ambassador Mola Mola, who was at that time the executive direct, executive secretary of the International Conference on the Great Lakes region, had met at a conference in Arusha. And uh, they discussed a possible collaboration between the Genocide Prevention Program and um, ICJLR. The Professor Andrea felt that uh, I was the right person being from the region to become a representative, so to speak, um, and subsequently became a program officer on genocide prevention representing George Mason University but here I'm talking about the GPP program to the ICJLR. While I was at ICJLR, there was only the program officer, nobody else. That was Mr. Nathan. And uh, he, was, he is the program officer on cross-cutting issues. Now, the way the programs are organized within ICGLR, cross-cutting issues had genocide prevention, environment, youth, and gender. I joined the ICGLR in 2007 when I was recruited there as a program officer for cross-cutting issues and where I handled issues to do with gender, issues to do with sexual violence, with youth, with the environment, and even genocide prevention. Knowing the importance of what it is, the ICGR, uh, it's probably one of the bodies in the region that are least used, yet they're the most important in terms of understanding the geopolitics of this region, that any time a genocide can happen in any of the countries. But uh, so its formation for me was very crucial. So this is why this regional thing, instrument, is more important in my opinion. The other issues are there in the pact, you know, non-aggression and so on and so forth. But as a student of conflict, I look at it from that perspective and that's how I see the importance of the pact and the protocol. And in my opinion, the other instruments at the UN level and so on can only supplement and reinforce it. What can become more easily acceptable is the pact. And that is why you saw in last year, I think last year somewhere, heads of states from the Great Lakes region met, held about four special summits on DRC under the ICGLR umbrella. That made it very easy for them to meet because they have a commitment to respond. 
the Roman statute wouldn't bring them to a negotiating table. The UN would not bring them to a negotiating table. There's a reason why the ICJL came in place. Uh, the 1994 Rwanda genocide happened and everybody left it, the Rwandans to themselves. No one in the region attempted to save the one million uh, people who died, other than us seeing them floating on Lake Victoria here. Now, I think the process is that it's the same thing, goes back to the same thing of, of nipping the problem in the bud early enough. There was enough information that showed that actually genocide had started before even the downing of the president. By Polish peacekeepers, they put out information. The people killed same ethnicity because of their national cards. So what I'm trying to say is that the process of the ICJR was based on little understanding of the conflicts in this region, how they develop, how quickly they, they can become a problem like it happened here in, in, in Rwanda, and therefore act as a region. Three is that this, this ICJR, the former 11 member countries, are all countries that are surrounding a region of intense conf ethnic conflict. Rwanda, Burundi, DRC, now Central African Republic. South Sudan hadn't come in, but everybody could tell that anything could happen. So I think we have this, those frameworks, the, the, the Roma Statute, the ICC, the court, we have the UN. What did the UN do? It was the UN which refused to send peacekeepers asked by uh, Canadian General Delay to, to, to be able to help the people in Rwanda. So what I'm trying to say is that they have their own configuration, but I think for the region to have recognized, and the UN itself, in the, the process of the SCJR involved the UN, the African Union, and heads of states in this region, who said, we will not wait for a response for the problems in this region, for something to first, to first mobilize troops in Canada, in Quebec, and bring them down to, to, to Kasese in Uganda. No, we in the region should be, be dealing with these problems. That is why you have some, uh, what do you call it, um, a semblance of peace in DRC. It's simply because of the involvement of the countries in the region. If you had brought in a mediator from, let's say, Mongolia to come and become the, the one who is mediating, it would have taken that person no less than one year to understand the geopolitical conflict, how they develop and the social cultural problems in the region. But if you bring the head of the state of Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania to speak about the DRC, the proximity, they understand. So that's the essence. That's a layman's understanding of why the, the ICJR is very important. I think if this is adapted as a regional strategy, as a regional strategy, if ICJLR towards prevention, they adapted even one approach and they say there is so much going on, but we are going to invest as ICJLR in education towards prevention. They will transform a society.